يعني congratulations uh, from our deepest uh, يعني hearts because of the great achievement you and your team have done it's uh, يعني you raised the uh, whole uh, Middle Eastern flag everywhere in the world no thank you very much it was definitely an amazing uh, achievement and you had that everyone worked very hard for it and uh, it turned the dream into re reality yani Uh, as you do know that we have uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of people watching now, so I'm going to start with a little bit of an introduction. Uh, Kamal Bahamdan, born February 1971, a five-time Olympic rider, mashallah, took part in four World Championships and four Pan-Arab Games. He won four team gold medals in the Pan-Arab Games, one individual gold, and one individual silver medal. He also won one team gold medal in the Asian Games. And finally, the greatest achievement of all, one bronze medal at the London Olympics for the team, and fourth place in the individual uh, ranking with just one second difference. Kamal is a visionary and an entrepreneur who enjoys building investment platforms. He managed BV Group in 1994 in the U.S., yet in 2009 he founded Safanad, a company specialized in real estate, private equity, and marketable security, uh, based in Geneva, New York, and Saudi Arabia. Kamal enjoys other sports, most serious of which is skiing. Finally, he states that he owes his parents all the gratitude there is for their support, and he is one of six siblings, mashallah. So a thank you to the parents is very well deserved. Uh, one very appealing thing to me in this interview is that we've had a previous uh, encounter with Kamal uh, in an article in Horse Times. So now we're going to be comparing notes before and after. Now, in one of the previous interviews with Horse Times, you mentioned the Olympics is the ultimate experience. You're a man who has been around in several championships, uh, Grand Prix, everything. Tell us a little bit about the Olympics in particular, and of course we mean the London Olympics. Um, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, I mean, in general, definitely the games, I mean, if it's, it's the ultimate stage for any sport and um, for every athlete the dream is to you know is to perform and to try to win one of the three medals one of the three prizes in that big stage and uh, it was definitely the case for me and uh, what makes this one the last one the other one is the, the most special one because the goal was definitely that in this one specifically I mean uh, is my goal you know when I when I thought about you know when I had to make the decision about uh, taking the sabbatical and taking a year and a half off and just focus on riding and I have to evaluate what would be my goal there, what would make it uh, worthwhile and the goal was definitely is it the only way I would do it is if I, if, if I have a good shot at the podium and uh, so that made it extra special because of the whole journey, the whole preparation that went before it. Uh, uh, but do you feel that, that there's a certain pressure incurred with the Olympics in particular that makes it even more difficult, you know, staying cool, uh, you, know, you know that a lot of teams take with them a, a mental or a, or a therapist to, to help them with the uh, sort of being cool during this stressful time. So is that a, an eligible part of the difficulty of the Olympics? Yeah, I mean, definitely when you have a big, I mean, we have a big stage, a uh, stage as big as the Games, uh, the Olympic Games, and uh, you have you know, high goals, of course that adds more to the pressure, but the trick here is to really treat it like any other competition, which is difficult to do, and that is why you said that you know, the mental uh, preparation is very important. But the key, the key there is to go to this big stage and not to think about it as a big stage. Uh, you have to do all your preparation before you get there. I mean, and you have, when you get there, you just have to trust that you did everything you needed to do and uh, you just go there and uh, enjoy the moment and try to perform. And, uh, and this is, to be honest, I mean, now I can say this after the games, I mean, this is exactly what I did. I mean, for me, 
the games was just when I got there. I mean, it was a lot of hard work for the year and a half before. And when I got there, it was just a moment of enjoyment. And I just said, you know, did, I, I, the night before, I went in my head to everything I did. I said I did everything I could. And uh, I just have to go make the maximum, the, the best out of it in terms of joy. And the results would follow. And, uh, and that's exactly what I did. And I think this is the biggest trick here. It's not to go there and start thinking about how big the stage is, how big the competition is, and uh, and definitely you cannot think that everyone in, in the world is watching now. I mean, and you can't think of results, positive or negative. What you're what you're saying actually drives me to to that uh, you know coming question. Um, part of the stability uh, you maintained during the the games, because uh, I've looked at all your performances several times. You want to tell me that. All your preparation the year before, all your calculations, your fitness, your horse's fitness, your competitions and the choice of events that you've gone through is what led you to stay stable, calm and calculated at the Olympics? There's no doubt about that. And uh, from a year and a half ago, I had, you know, I approached it the same way we approach any goal in business or like in sport. I mean, you, you put the goal and you make it a working plan backwards from that goal. And first, you have to evaluate, evaluate is, is the goal realistic or not? And that's a function of the tools you have. I mean, and tools is between tools, of course. Horses are an important part, part of it, but then the preparation. And uh, part of the preparation for me was, you know, me and the horse, myself as a rider, off the horse and on the horse. And same thing for the horses in terms of fitness and experience. And uh, I had a full schedule for that, and uh, I divided it into four areas. Me, as a person, or as a rider, I had my personal fitness, physical fitness, and that was a combination of fitness on horse and fitness off horse. Uh, the off horse fitness was just the normal physical fitness between the gym and the cardio workout. Second fitness for me as a person was the mental fitness, and the mental fitness, uh, that was something that I worked on every single day. Uh, whether I'm in uh, on the horse training or on the horse showing, and uh, as well as off the horse, and uh, part of the things that kept the, so that's I can come back to that if you want to if you're interested. Sure. The second part, yeah. The second part was uh, the preparations in the competitions to pick the right competitions, which would help me uh, in terms of figuring out my horse. And also to make me live the games and the level of difficulty in the games, or as close as possible to it. And for that, I picked, you know, always the, the GCT uh, series, uh, where most you know, probably end up. Comp these are the same people that compete there that you end up competing with in the games, and uh, you know, with a lot of technical courses, etc. Uh, so when I was talking, I said I'd come back to it, and this is <laughs> the mental part. I mean. Uh, uh, because that kind of connects to your first question. Uh, the mental part, I mean, there, for the past, I'd say, four weeks before the games, every time I go to bed, I through my head, I go, I, I try to live that tomorrow is the games. Tomorrow morning, I wake up, and I am in Greenwich, going to be heading to Greenwich Park. And I try to live that many times over. And, uh, and that was very helpful for me. You know, I, I had, because the night before the games, I mean, it was like the past four weeks, the, the previous four weeks, in terms of you've been going over it so many times that it became a routine in your head. You knew what to expect. Mm -hmm. And uh, so of course, I did that just before going to bed. And, but also, when I went, uh, I did my competitions, especially the, every competition I went to, I tried to think of it as the games. And sometimes, if something doesn't work out in one competition, I tried to fix it. And in preparation for the next competition, I go over the same routine. I say, okay, this is uh, this is the games again, and I'm going to make sure nothing is going to go wrong here. Mm. So it's just that routine I did for a year and a half that definitely helped me of staying cool in the games and just enjoying it and making the maximum out of it. Well, uh, apparently it paid off. That showed in uh, in your riding, which brings me actually to uh, to my. Second part of the question. You also mentioned in, in previous interviews that you trained earlier on with Ann Krasinski, BZ Maiden, Nelson Pessoa, and Jan Tops. Uh, Jan Tops is, is, is the man of uh, JCT and 
uh, I understand that he was the one who found the, the mayor test for you. How did you manage between Stan Ivan Passion, who was the team coach, and between Jan, who was uh, a coach that, that you had a particular relationship with? You've met all along the different tours, different places, you know, with the JCT. How did you make that combination of two technical people who are there to help? Okay, I mean, obviously I've been with Jan uh, for it's almost eight years now. And uh, we've worked very closely together, I mean, not just on the training part, but also the strategizing, uh, uh, getting ready as a, you know, as a rider and the horses and picking the shows and uh, building up for the games. So that was, has been a, an extremely close relationship. And uh, Stanley also from the beginning, he, you know, he, he's, he's uh, the team coach and he has a lot of experience as well. But the way we worked out is, you know, Jan has been, because of the relationship with Jan and uh, how good it has been working with Jan, so my main coach, or the one that we walked the courses with, with and uh, ground with, and who was there in the missing position, has been Jan. And after we finished that, then I just exchanged notes with Stani. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do that, the three of us, Stani, Jan, and myself. And then we discuss, discuss the course together, and if there's a change to the plan, we'll change it, or... Uh, if everything, if, if we you know, if we decide to stick to the plan, there are no changes. We stick with it. So this is how we worked it out. So I tried to get the best of both worlds, basically. Um, that uh, seemed like a, a very successful combination because uh, uh, actually uh, my 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 next question was about your horse, which I have to mention that uh, you know being you know in the field and riding and competing myself. Looking at your courses, they they were very uh, particular. You and the mayor were very in tune. The first couple of rounds, it was very uh, very uh, spectacular. At, at the last round, you had you really were asking different things of the mayor, and she was you know jumping out of her skin, responding to your various requests, and that showed that she was really there for you. Tell us why you chose Tess, because I know that you, you know, were in and out, you know, choosing between her and Delphi. And what would you say about the mayor? I shouldn't say the mayor. I should say the partner, the winning partner. You know, the teammate during the Olympics. Yeah, I mean, in terms of how I, let's talk about how we chose Tess. I think in this, with she chose. To be there, she kept you know, test when we started. Delphi has been always the main horse, and who did amazing things. And uh, with her previous career and with me, she's always she's always been the horse that has been my the first horse in my string. Uh, Cezanne is also a horse that has tons of experience. We did a lot of things together, and Tess was the newest addition to the team. Mm. So Tess had to work herself up from the third position. To being the horse and uh, uh, you know of choice, uh, and when I say she had to work herself up, she really did. She kept sticking her head up out because when we started the season, uh, uh, she, as I said, she was the th support horse. I mean, she was the horse that was supporting uh, Delphi and Cezanne in the shows. And in certain competitions, you know, I, I needed to move her up to a first horse and to give the other two a rest. And every time I did that. She surprised me, and uh, she gave much more than I've asked for. And finally, when we eased off towards the end of the uh, preparation of the games in my in the last three competitions, uh, you know, when I, uh, I took her to Monaco as a first horse, and she jumped uh, double three rounds there in the Grand and she was amazing. And uh, so, okay. There she is still the main horse, and I take her to Istria and uh, to take the pressure of the other two horses. And again, she surprised me. She jumped three, three rounds and doing up fourth in a very tough uh, Grand Prix in Istria. So it's really she, she kept, and the way she behaved, the way she acted uh, throughout, I mean, whether in the ring or outside uh, or even at home, she kept saying, you know, I want to go. And this is by being so. Uh, good, uh, every single day. I mean, uh, whether you're taking her out for a hack or for a flat, she's always been in, you know, she finished the Grand Prix, and this one important thing, she would finish a Grand Prix 
on Sunday and uh, you take her out Monday morning and she's as fresh as she was you know on the Friday for the Grand Prix uh, and as happy and as focused and she, so she gave that uh, the strong thing she showed that she was very confident very fresh uh, and very stable throughout when we jumped the warm up, I mean, because take the last minute, I mean, it was still, uh, you know, flip a coin of a coin between them, and uh, she was just amazing in the warm up in uh, London in the first warm up again, and uh, the way she behaved uh, after the trip in the games and the way she held herself. Yeah, we could not say it was very obvious and very clear that she's the one uh, that should start in the games, and the thing that was. Uh, 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 that went against her the most is the experience. I mean, because she doesn't have as much experience as the other horses. And uh, I took her in the first day, and uh, the way she handled it from the minute she walked into the ring uh, till she came out, uh, she was fabulous. I mean, she she warmed up very well. She goes, she stands on the end gate, and she did not. Get tense or anything. She was actually more curious than tense, which is a very good thing uh, to have. And she goes in there and she finished her round, and she was still as uh, happy and as relaxed uh, after jumping the first, uh, the last jump, as she was before she went through the gate. Uh, so that gave me a bit of confidence. And coming to you, the second part of the question is how in tune it. Uh, we are with uh, Tess. Uh, yeah, Tess. The strongest part about Tess or the combination of me and Tess is how smart she is and how right now she can predict every move, everything I ask of her, and vice versa. I mean, we're, and that's the strongest part, which is, uh, you know, the games or any jumping, any course is about jumping the, the jumps clear, I mean, just keeping the jumps up. And uh, yes, I mean, there are a lot of uh, questions that the course designers put there, you know, you put a long distance after, after a short one or vice versa, where he forced you to write usually to, to have to plan jumping, in order to jump the second one here, you have to get, take a risk on the first one, for example, whether it's coming into a combination, especially, or coming into a line. So, of course, designers tend to do that. And that becomes difficult because, you know, sometimes you have to take a risk on, a, on the, in the first particle of a combination. However, with this, I mean, that, the, we, always uh, eliminate that risk because she's so quick and so in tune. So all I have to do is make sure I focus on the first particle of uh, or, or for obstacle in a triple combination. And I give you, since you've watched and out of the viewers watch the games, uh, if you think about it, I mean, one of the, in the final round of the individual, there are two questions, two big questions that the course designers ask. In, in the final round of the individual. And one was in the first combination, which was a vertical oxer, the oxer vertical. Yes. And there uh, you had a huge oxer coming in to a very short one stride to, to a very tall vertical. Uh, and I cannot emphasize how big that oxer was. <laughs> it showed, it showed. So, uh, but then you, you hit a very short stride to a tall vertical. So people could not override the oxer because they worry about if they override the oxer they get into trouble with the vertical. Exactly. So everyone that thought of the vertical ended up having the back core of the oxer. And uh, in with in Tessa's case, I know what I knew what I had. So I said I'm just gonna ride this oxer as a single oxer so I really wrote it strong. And in the one stride she almost came to a standstill, backed off the vertical and carried over it and came down. And then you jump two jumps. And then the second big question comes, which is a completely diff the opposite of that. He had the triple combination, which was a vertical, a long one to an oxer oxer combination. Mm -hmm. And the trick was there, I mean, you had to come in with speed into the combination and uh, risk having the vertical down. But you had to do that to be able to, you know, to give the horses momentum to jump the oxer oxer. In the case of this, I don't, didn't even have to worry about that. I just wrote the vertical as a single uh, vertical because I knew the minute she hits the ground, we, the minute we finish jumping the vertical, she's so quick and so in tune, and she responds so quick, which she did, and you know, and stretch herself in the middle and jump the oxer oxer. So that's her strongest point, and I think that's what you've been referring to, 
and but this is a strong point I know I mean because each horse has a strong point and this is her strength. she's so quick and so smart I mean she's one of the smartest horses I've sat on and smart and she deploys that a smart horse that's on your side I mean she's diff definitely would do anything and she's so in tune with uh, me you you can't imagine how you how you got us worried looking I mean looking at the videos again I you know I get worried what's happening but the 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 entunement that is between the two of you is amazing. Uh, we didn't know Tess as you know her, so we didn't think that that your precision and your decisions would be uh, responded to in that sense. So it was it was uh, whoa, what is he doing? But but the mare is is yours and you know her and she responds to you and and the performance was just uh, theatrical. So that was amazing as well. She's very talented, very smart, and she trusts me, and I trust her. I think that's the best way to summarize uh, the, what, why we were in tune. That's, that, that was great. Now, um, did you go to the Olympics with all the preparation, all the you know, choices that you had, you had to make? Did you think that you were going to be on that podium? taking a bronze medal? Did you think that really you were going to be among you know, all those riders coming in fourth in the individual level with just one second difference? Bearing in mind one thing that is very important. Uh, all the dilemma and the negotiations and the different uh, you know, thoughts of people worldwide or in different parts of the world that you know, the Saudis or the, the people from the Middle East will not perform up to the expectations or you know those um, publications in England about um, you know people watching you know international riders and are we up to the standard or not you guys did fantabulous <laughs> if I may say and 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 you were among the stars did you go to the Olympics with any idea of what you really could achieve Okay, uh, <laughs> it's a very good question. Uh, actually, what happened? You know, remember when I said I had to make a big decision, which is take time off work, and yeah. it's not an easy decision for me. So it has for me, it has to be worthwhile if I want to stay away for uh, you know over a year, a year and a half, or almost uh, dedicate my whole every minute of my day towards the games. So making the decision. I mean, there, at least I had to have a goal that makes it worthwhile. It has to be a realistic goal. So, uh, first thing I looked at is, okay, I mean, uh, what's a realistic goal? I thought, of course, uh, as an individual, it was a top 10 finish. And I said, when I say a top 10 finish, it doesn't mean that you can get the 10th spot. But it means if you don't end up, because there's so, there's so many... I mean, riders in the games that are all having the same goal uh, and very capable, very experienced, uh, whether uh, as individual riders or team riders. So the first thing in terms of the, on the individual side, I said, okay, 10th meaning. If I'm not in the top 10, I would be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, I mean, there are only three spots on the podium and luck can play. And, I mean, there's so many different factors. So, but I said, okay, if I don't end up in the top 10, I should be disappointed. What would it take to do that? And when I went through the whole thing, including the horses I had, or I ended up having, I said, yes, that is a very realistic goal to finish in the top 10, and that's what would it take. And of course, the experience from the previous game helped in that. To go back into the team, a major reason to, for me to take the year and a half uh, off work and to, to march, for, for march for, the, for, for, for it, was uh, having uh, looking at my teammates, who's going to be riding with me in the team? Because the team, the the uncertainty is much less than the individual. Because uh, in the team, you know, when you have a full team, a strong team, you can cover up for each other. And because the best three scores over two rounds count, and uh, th there's definitely more uh, certainty in terms of uh, uh, achieving the goals in the teams. So I looked at it and I looked at my teammates and uh, the experience they have and the talent they have and I said, yes, with this team, 
If this team has the right horses, if each one of these riders has the right horses, there's no better team uh, to be riding with, and we will have a very strong shot on being on the podium. And that was actually part of it. So then I said, okay, all I have to do is, uh, so I know I can do it. I have a very strong team uh, mates that are very experienced, very talented, and they're going to have the right horses under the, the right program. So uh, yes, for the team, we definitely were targeting. We would have been disappointed if we were not on the podium. Uh, for the individual, I would have been uh, disappointed if I was not on the top 10. So. Yeah, to answer your question, yes, the goal for uh, definitely it's difficult to say I, my goal was to end up fourth, but it was definitely top ten. And for the team, it was difficult to say I, we're going to end up gold, silver, bronze. But definitely, we thought that we had a chance as good as any to be in the podium, and we would have been uh, honestly uh, disappointed if things didn't work out. It could have, you know, it didn't work out for a lot of other capable uh, uh, teams, and they were disappointed. But, uh, sure. For sure, we were not there for the participation. We were there to be a competitive team and to fight for a spot in the podium. We were happy that it happened. What would you What would you say if, if you know, if you give me just a brief sentence to all the allegations of, you know, the riders from the Middle East cannot, will not, uh, would not, uh, without going into details. I'm sure you know the the, the, the summary of, of what's been said. What would you say in regards to that? Uh, I think it matters two things here. I mean, first, I think uh, we have so many talented uh, riders in the Middle East that are as capable and more capable than most uh, of their. They, they can do it. They, they're as competitive as any. Let's put it this way. Yeah. Uh, in our sport, I think there has been a lot of talk about. Uh, not our sport, but recently with the Saudis' acquisition of few horses, and I think the Qataris as well, there's a lot of talk about, uh, yeah, they've been buying the top horses and uh, they're buying their way, I think. Uh, maybe this is what you mean. Uh, this sport is like car racing. I mean, if you go into a Formula One ring, you can't take a Fiat and compete uh, you know, on the Formula One circuit. The question is, and these horses, I mean, uh, are horses that everyone is competing for, everyone is buying good horses. and. To me, I get, uh, I've been in the circuit for a long time, and I have so many friends that have been buying uh, from all over the world, buying horses, some of the top drivers in the world. Uh, they're all going on with the best horses they can get their hand on. And uh, I don't think, definitely not, uh, we, we, you know, we're all in it. There's so many riders that spend much more money than the Middle Eastern riders, let's put it this way, and some of the top riders in the world. And, uh, it's just the hierarchy has been there, and if it if if winning can be bought by just buying good horses, then you would have had many many winners uh, in the world from uh, the you know, from everywhere. You would not have the top riders sticking to their positions. Uh, so what I'm saying, I mean, everyone should work very hard to try to get the best horses you can get, uh, but that's not enough. That's a small piece of it. Uh, what uh, believe you know. The, of course, I mean everyone has a dream, but the question is, don't sit down and just dream. I mean, uh, wake up and work for that dream. Uh, you know, dreaming is easy when you're sleeping, and sometimes when you're awake. But the important part is when you're awake. Every to make every minute counts, and to make every minute counts is you have to have a very detailed plan, an exact plan that drives in one direction, which is the direction of your dream. So uh, my message to, you asked me to say a very brief message, and I've been going on yes. and on, so, but uh, it's, it's important for everyone to turn their dreams into goals, goals into action plans, and to wake up and work towards them. That's a very long message, but they can survive. Uh, now, now that you've realized the dream, there is another very interesting uh, question, and it's yeah. actually a hypothesis that has been presented, particularly with the tennis players. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people who win Wimbledon, who win, you know, uh, uh, all the big stuff that there is to win, they lose motivation a little bit. And you previously mentioned success is, I quote your words actually, success is about fulfillment. It is about achieving personal goals while finding balance with other aspects of life. That's what you said. Now that you've mentioned or that you've actually 
not mentioned. Now that you've won the biggest uh, and the, and the best, you know, medals and uh, and achievements and all that, does that take away your motivation? Now that you've have a bronze medal in the Olympic Games, does that take away your motivation? Will you still be motivated for further and more? And how will you do that? Yeah, Mot <laughs> for motivation, I don't. Yeah, I, I believe in one thing, which is every day we. We live is uh, a day that does not uh, get repeated, so we have to make the maximum out of it. So that's what motivates me, is to make the maximum of every day. And, uh, and to make the maximum out, out of every day, you have to have goals to achieve. And uh, I, yes, I mean, the games has been a dream of, me, of mine, which was translated into goal, but it's one goal that I achieved. Uh, and so that's one goal, but there are always new goals that you set, in, as I said. I mean, and these goals now can be in sport, life, or business. So now I'm taking, you know, uh, yes, I'm going to finish the season for the GCT. And there is a goal there is to try to move up and hopefully, uh, if all goals were finished in a, on, a, on a podium position there. Uh, but at the end of this season, I'm going to sit back and reevaluate and uh, reset my priorities and my goals and come up with my new goal, uh, realistic goals between uh, you know, my business and horses and, uh, and move on. I like the, the engineering aspect that you, that you drive into your life where you think uh, decide on what is reasonable goals that you say uh, and then start the realization or the implementation aspect and then you stop and think again and, and realize again it's uh, it's a good uh, good theory and and good presentation uh, you're a role model now to to a lot of uh, people a lot of riders a lot of uh, fans around the world so it's it's a good message here to to tell uh, people we'll move on now to a, a very uh, diplomatic and, and uh, political uh, part. The pinnacle of success, Saudi Equestrian. When it developed, how it developed, and the goals it had in mind when it commenced. I think that today we, we, we can proudly say that Saudi Equestrian achieved most, if not all, their goals. They have an international team, international representation, very strong if we think among all the the teams in the world at the Olympics the Saudi team came with the bronze medal how do you see the future development of the Saudi equestrian and its role in developing the sport in Saudi Arabia yeah uh, like you said Saudi uh, again the Saudi equestrian achieved uh, they have a set of goals I mean definitely one of them to have a strong team uh, that would uh, showcase in the 2012 games, which we did, we achieved that goal. But uh, another key goal for, for Saudi Christians since inception has been to broad, broaden the uh, participation base of uh, show jumpers in, in Saudi, uh, and also to increase the awareness uh, of the sport uh, in Saudi. And uh, definitely, I think the success that we had in the games uh, and uh, Hamdra by achieving uh, one goal, which is a key goal, which is the catalyst uh, for the other two goals, uh, should help achieve the other two goals. Already we've seen uh, during the game from the wide participation of uh, actually uh, from Saudi and from the rest of the Arab world, I mean, uh, on Twitter and uh, people were with us all the way supporting us and. Uh, Give me some very encouraging comments and people that had never followed the sport before, and this is just by reading their messages, and uh, that they're more interested. And so that happened during the games. And when I came back uh, to Saudi after the games, I was uh, very pleasantly surprised and uh, amazed by uh, how much awareness has been, you know, our success created uh, awareness about the sport. And we're hoping that this awareness uh, is going to translate into more participants in the sports, uh, young kids coming into it. And it will happen too as you know, newcomers into the sport, but uh, as well as people that are in the sport now, they know that uh, 
the ultimate prize, which is winning a medal in the games, can be reached. It's within reach of anyone, and uh, anyone that uh, work hard for it. Uh, so uh, yeah, so hopefully it was a very positive development of the sport. I'm very optimistic about it. Uh, I think the future in Shara will be very uh, promising uh, for the Saudi Christian sport uh, in general. And uh, I will make it uh, one of my goals to give anything I can to, not just in Saudi, but to all of the Arab riders all over the world. Uh, the ones that are riding within the Arab leagues or riding internationally. Uh, and I'm giving this message uh, through this forum and through you guys. I mean, if there's anything I can do or help with advice or direction, or uh, I'd be more than happy to do. Actually, it's, it's, it's a mission of mine now. Well, uh, on behalf of all the riders, all the people who follow you, uh, all the people who find you a role model, I, I, I want to thank you and, and, and appreciate that. Uh, do you feel that one day you will have a managerial role in the development of this sport, whether in Saudi Arabia, in Saudi Equestrian, in the Equestrian Federation, or at the FEI? Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely, as I said, I mean, the whole thing started with the love of, in my case, with the love of the horse and the love of the sport, and I have a vested interest uh, to make sure. That, uh, that I mean, can never make sure, but I have a vested interest in the development of the sport. And as I said, I would do anything I can, uh, whether uh, uh, formally or informally, uh, to help promote the sport. And uh, today, there's Kamal, no w w watch, watch this statement because we're going to hold you to it. Yeah, Horse Times do. will hold you to that statement, I promise. Okay, please do so. I know I noticed, I mean, from your questions and going back to some old interviews, you, I have to be careful, but uh, I mean it uh, when I say it. And, uh, and sorry, but there's no immediate goals for doing anything, f no immediate uh, plans for doing anything formally. Uh, but uh, in the future, if I feel that I can help in any way, if me being in a formal position or in a position would help promote the sports, I definitely do it. But uh, meanwhile, uh, informally, anything I can do, I would do it. Fantastic. Thanks. My last uh, question. How did you, as a human being, a sportsman, a husband, uh, a fellow Saudi, how did you feel when you stood on that podium and held that medal? Yeah, uh, I hope it doesn't sound like a cliché, because every time I heard it, I said it's a cliché before. but. Uh, when I experience it, it's truly, it's an, ex you know, it's, it's, it's a feeling, it's an experience uh, that's very difficult to describe. I mean, what can I describe it? You just get transformed into this, uh, into a completely different uh, zone. Uh, it's uh, a mixture of feeling. It's the feeling of fulfillment, of pride, of joy. Uh, it's a mixture of feeling that they all come together and uh, it elevates you uh, literally, uh, you know, out of, uh, into, into a different zone. Uh, uh, and it's an amazing feeling and I would wish for any, it's the ultimate reward for uh, a lot of hard work and uh, uh, I really wish for everyone that works very hard and uh, has a dream to, to, to be in that position because it's, uh, the only way to, there's no way to describe it, uh, the only way is to live it and experience it. Okay. I'm sure it's a very special feeling. You, you, met, uh, you met with the king, uh, Abdullah, after the, the, the games and so on. What did he, what did he tell you? Uh, his majesty has always been uh, the biggest supporter of uh, of our sport, I mean, he has been the ultimate horseman, and uh, his love of the horses and the sport uh, has been amazing. And you mentioned in, in the past uh, Pan Arab Games, Asian Games, all these championships. I mean, he was always the first one to congratulate the team uh, after finishing, and uh, he met us almost after every single championship of them, and he always had some very encouraging uh, words. And these encouraging words came, um, you know, in the good times and in the bad times. 
Mm. And uh, he've always been there, and uh, to be, and uh, his that kind of support that he continued to give us has always been a great motivation. And uh, for him to, with, for His Majesty to to meet us just after we arrive, uh, you know, we went from the airport straight to to see His to His Majesty, uh, and. Uh, to get out of his busy schedule and out of uh, all of his commitments, uh, that you know, to give us uh, these moments and uh, and to congratulate us and uh, to say how proud he was with us and uh, what we have to do uh, was also, that was a high you know, uh, that was the highlight of the whole thing and uh, to sum it with the medal of honor that he gave to us. As a recognition for uh, for an appreciation uh, has been just amazing. So it was another uh, an extremely uh, joyful and uh, rewarding moment uh, to be there uh, in front of him, uh, listening to him, uh, telling us that he'd been proud of our achievement and what we've achieved and what we've done. Fantastic. Would it be possible for the viewers to see? Your um, bronze medal and the medal of honor you received from His Majesty. Do you know? As we were going through the interview, I knew that you were going to ask me that, and <laughs> I, I knew I forgot something to bring it. But uh, I apologize for that. No, it's all right. Well, I will. I will uh, end the uh, interview, leaving you with a statement to tell the youth in in Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and the Middle East of uh, little simple words of advice. Okay. Uh, believe it or not, guys, once I was uh, your age, and that's a few, you know, for all the young, someone who was just dreaming and wanting to, to, to achieve something. And I'm sure that most of you are much more talented and much more uh, dedicated and, than I am, and you can achieve much more than I did. Uh, the only thing, the only advice I would give uh, to you, again, is every one of us dream. We all dream. Everyone dreams. Uh, the key thing here is to wake up and turn these dreams, uh, dreams into goals and work uh, hard uh, to achieve them. And, uh, the, and nothing is going to come easy. There will be ups and downs. And uh, as long as you're committed and you keep your motivation pure, to your goal, things will work out in some very magical ways. And uh, so, keep your keep your goals pure. Keep working towards them. Don't get uh, discouraged or uh, disappointed uh, every time you get knocked out. Stand up and keep marching uh, and forward. Don't turn back. And uh, mad amazing things and magical things would happen. Well, I'll, I'll terminate this interview with uh, another uh, proverb that I like so much. They say that when you want something bad enough and you work for it, the world conspires to serve you. Kamal Bahamdan, we are proud of you and we thank you very much and we want to see more and more medals, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you, Khaled, and thank you all for being with us. Thank you very much. Thanks.